talks and says things they don't want to say and didn't smile at a press conference was Peyton Manning did the same shit and they tried to destroy him. But Brady can be in all these fucking scandals and they still kiss his ass and call him the greatest ever, act like he runs the team, coaches the team, runs the organization. It's so fucking annoying. It's so damn annoying, man. It just, they're going to do what they do, man. I guess what annoys me more than anything is that people just don't see it. From uh, Clay Davis, Brady and Manning got the complexion for the protection for the collection. I added on that last part, but yes, sir. Preach, sir. Here we go, man. Here we go. See, I think we got a problem here. Let me let this bomb drop. The Jungle Brother. Roger Goodell is like ribs. Not... <laughs> This shit has got to stop. Oh, this has got to stop, man. From Jungle Brother, Roger Goodell is like ribs not drenched in sauce. A joke. Man, listen, man. Y'all cats in these ribs and sauce, man. Listen, the best ribs do not have sauce on them. And not having sauce on ribs does not equal dry ribs. If you equate dry ribs to not having sauce, then I'm... I, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this. You have not yet had great barbecue, and I feel for you. I offer a radio pound. But you need to do something with your life if you don't know that the best ribs have no sauce on. But nice joke, though. It's that bullshit, man. From Sluggo. You're not going to find anything if you're not really looking for it, and you're not interested in getting the truth. No doubt, sir. No doubt. 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 And, and this is the thing, though. They couldn't possibly want the truth. They couldn't. Because the coverage is minimal in every situation. Oswilder pushing a woman, it doesn't make news. I'm sure most people didn't know. Fitzpatrick, three picks, all his fault. Fourth quarter, team doesn't go to the playoffs. Nobody notices. In fact, they go on a campaign to make sure he gets a starting job. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Jay Cutler never really won anything, nothing. Uh, Matthew Stafford never really won anything, nothing. Matt Ryan failing for the last three seasons, no criticism of him. As a matter of fact, they saying it's everybody but him. James Winston throws for 4,000 his rookie year, and they're saying he hasn't learned how to throw, and is he a leader? He's one of only three quarterbacks to throw for 4,000, and he is obviously a natural leader, always has been, and they're questioning his leadership and his ability to throw the damn ball. Motherfucker. It is just not, is not realistic that somebody is that blind and dumb, man. They're just not willing to cover black people properly. And the only, the only question is why? Just unwilling to, unable to, because they're just that ignorant and hateful? Or they're just really, 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 really bad at their job? I just don't think anybody's that damn bad at their job. I could be wrong. From Sluggo, editorializing or cooking up bullshit versus actual reporting. And that's what the media does, sir. And that's a great that, that's a great way to put it. Let me give it one more time for full effect. Editorializing or cooking up bullshit versus actual reporting. And they do the former. That that's really what the media is nowadays, man. And I just I don't know. I just I guess it's not entertaining for me like that. It's not entertaining for me like that. So I just don't I, I don't know. I just don't understand the infatuation, man. But they do what they do. They do what they do. From a jungle brother. Remember Ron Zook? They ran him out of Florida because he recruited black quarterbacks. Then the media whiteballed him at Illinois because he had black quarterbacks. Illinois ain't been shit since they ran him off. Ron Zook until they hired Lovey. Uh, you know what? That's the truth too. And that goes back to the narrative I was talking about with the way they go out to Rex Ryan. They did the same thing with Zook. They did the exact same thing uh with Zook. Look how they're doing. Look how they're doing uh Deshaun Watson now with that bullshit they was talking earlier with this little article, man. Look, again, man, it's old at this point. I wish you'd just say, I'm looking for a reason not to like this ninja quarterback. I'm so tired of this dumbass fucking cold, man. Every black quarterback that comes out, it's the same damn thing. He needs to learn the terminology. He's going to have to learn to take a snap from center. Every one. He's going to have to learn how to throw you know they said all that bullshit about Cam Newton, right? One of only three quarterbacks to throw for 4,000 his rookie season. Threw for more, more yards than anybody in his first two or three seasons. 
So how the hell is it possible he needs to learn how to throw? Those two don't mix. That doesn't add up. It doesn't make any damn sense. I'm throwing for 4,000 yet and still I can't throw. How the fuck is that possible? Every black quarterback that comes out, they say that stupid shit. Same thing with Russell Wilson. Has one Super Bowl, should have two. But they don't have to because those damn coaches were so offended by Marshawn Lynch and they were so Im- they were so compelled to not make him the MVP. They were so mad at him for being himself and not playing the game that they refused to give him that touchdown that should have been his and fucked up a Super Bowl in the process. That's how much they dislike a ninja that doesn't act as they feel, or excuse me, that doesn't act accordingly or doesn't act according to their narrative, to the confines that they got you in in their mind. If you step out of those, they got a damn problem. Marshawn Lynch defied all that, but he was so good they couldn't bench him. And he balled out in that Super Bowl. He should have ran that touchdown in the end zone, and they denied him that shit because they dislike a ninja to act that, act that way that damn much. Threw away a Super Bowl because of their personal fucking feelings. Russell Wilson should have had back-to-back Super Bowls against the two alleged greatest quarterbacks ever. Or two of the alleged greatest quarterbacks ever. He should have had back-to-back Super Bowl wins against both of them. But instead, they gave another damn one to Brady so they can continue to kiss his ass and act like he's the only damn reason the Cheatrice has ever won a damn Super Bowl. Shit is annoying. But that's their narrative, and that's the way they push it, and most people believe it. From Clay Davis. Man, my favorite show is coming back on How to Catch a Predator. What? They still show that show? Hey, if you want to see a whole bunch of white people getting arrested... Watch How to Catch a Predator. You talk about profiling. Just go get you uh, any white dude from 5'7 to about 6'2. And slightly socially awkward. Sometimes not even that. Sometimes not even that. Man, you want to see some white people get arrested, man? You know, watch to Catch a Predator. That is very Caucasian-centric. Now, they do throw a few Hispanics in there. I noticed that. But you see a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Wait a minute. I see some. Okay. Okay. This got to stop. I see something crazy in the chat, man. This has to be addressed. From a main. Uh, Wait a minute. From Clay Davis. Sluggo. To catch a predator show be funny as hell. It be all male colonizers being arrested. <laughs> <laughs> it does, Clay. <laughs> It always be a bunch of white dudes. <laughs> it always be a bunch of white dudes. They always answer the door and stuff. She's like, come on in. I got to go to the back. Okay, you ready to go? Just a minute. Then my man come out the back. <laughs> it's the same thing every time. Oh, damn. Oh, man. Hey, what about the one when they started? Like, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, like the initial ones, the people actually got to leave, right? And then they got the police involved. So they left outside the house and the police tackled the shit out of them, right? So initially they weren't doing that, though. That that came to be the funniest part, man. God damn, them jokers would leave the house and they tackle them and they start wailing and crying. Yeah, that was funny. You know what? I did kind of watch that because you did see a whole bunch of white people getting arrested. Then it's just funny to see them people get caught. I don't know. I wonder how much they enticing them, but it still doesn't matter. That's pretty damn bold, too. And some of them, yo, a couple of times, dude, the same dude came back twice. I remember the host even said, he said, don't I know you? <laughs> the host looked at dude and said, don't I know you? That's a damn shame. Oh, man. God dang. This joke would be happy, too. They just be smiling. <laughs> I, hey, you remember that one where dude damn said, uh, dude, I can't, what is this? Why'd you come here? Well, I just came to help her. You know, she seemed like she was in trouble, and I was going to tell her she shouldn't be on the internet like that. Is that right? Then why do you have a bottle of brandy, a vibrator, condoms, and KY jelly? <laughs> oh God! I mean, it, yeah, that that was that was good theater. That was good. That was good theater, man. That was good theater. God dang! I forgot about that show, Clay. I'm sorry, man. That show was funny. I didn't mean to do that. From Sluggo. Falcons first team march down the field with ease. Can anyone say 16 and 0? Yes, sir. Lord have mercy, them damn Falcons fans. But you are reminding me, man. It is a game night, isn't it? It is a game night. Got to record, man. I try not to watch a game while I'm doing this, man. You get a little distracted. 
and I try to avoid that if I can. All right, this is the Underground Railroad Show with Dad Ninja on Spreaker.com, also on SME. Shout out to uh, Doug Stewart and the TDSS fam. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Before I forget, man. This is section by the Real Cash Rangers at realcashradio.com. Okay, man, last thing I wanted to discuss is RG3 and this whole little thing about him being married. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because it's really stupid. Uh, again, um, you got first-round draft picks you could be looking at, none of whom look like a first-round draft pick. And by the way, let me um, – I, I said this once. Let me say it again. I said it before the draft. Dak Prescott, Marquise Williams, 12 gays, Trayvon Boykin, and Jacoby Brissett, I believe, were the best quarterbacks to come out of the draft. They all got uh, – Brissett got drafted third round, everybody else in the fourth, uh, some maybe even later. I want to say Williams and possibly Boykin are just fighting for a roster spot, which is a damn crime. But Goff, Wentz, Paxton Lynch, uh, what's the other one's name? Hackenberg, who threw his coach under the bus. By the way, his coach is black, and the media said, hey, man, you can't say that about your coach, <laughs> but you're right. He he wasn't shit. He, he was a terrible coach, and he's the reason you had a bad year. See how that works? You know how it's bad to throw your coach under the bus, right? He threw his coach under the bus, coach black, media backed him up, no trouble. He got drafted, like second round. At any rate. Um, I don't see any of those guys being better than the aforementioned people I just talked about. Uh, Dak Prescott, who you saw what he could, uh, a little bit of what he could do in that one uh, preseason game. Uh, again, he was with the first team, but he played against first team defense. And if you think it's because he's with the first team, then go to 12 gauge, who played with the second team or third, whichever one it was. And he played very well, about 166 yards, I think, through the air and took them on a game winning drive down the field with about a minute and four, minute and eight left, uh, most of it by way of his arm. And uh, actually, four seconds left on about the five or six-yard line, game with a touchdown. It's preseason, but he showed poise, and the reason why it matters is because they said people like Dak Prescott and 12-gauge needed two or three years, and they still might not make it. And if that's the case, why do they look like they should have been first-round picks, but all the people that got took in the first round look like they should have been fourth round? I'm just saying. It, it's just preseason, but it's not that it's a preseason game. It's that you said these guys need a lot of work, and these guys were closer. And such is not the case. I think it was really obvious that those guys were better quarterbacks. Especially if you look at where they played at, what they did, and what they accomplished. Really and truly, it's not even close. Really and truly, it's not even close. So, as far as what they accomplished, man, it, it's not even close, man. It, it really isn't. It, it's another one of those things that's, that's ridiculous. And I know the, the media coverage is one thing, but people that scout football are supposed to know better. So, it's scary to think that, I, I just don't know what the hell they're looking at. I just believe that a lot of rich-ass owners don't want a black quarterback. I, I don't see how it can be anything else. Either that or that's just the culture and coaching. There might be a lot of coaches that don't want it. I know who's ever coaching the Texans doesn't want one. I know that much. Whoever is coaching the Texans definitely doesn't want, want, want one. Fisher doesn't want another one for some reason. I don't, I don't know why. But, I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. But this whole RG3 thing, man, my only thing about this or the main thing I'm looking at with it or one of the main things anyway, man, is that it's it's beyond a non-story. But I'm just saying, with all the things that are actually going on, why the hell are you going after RG3 over his over who he's fucking? He's divorced now, so you're talking about that. It's a top story. Then you're saying uh, he's with some other chick, and, you, and you're showing pictures. Who gives a fuck? There's a 60 to 80% divorce rate in the fucking NFL. Do you know what that means? That means a lot of damn people are getting divorced. Yet and still, I can't remember hearing about the shit. For some, well, not not for some reason. They attack black quarterbacks over nothing. All that shit Brady was into, nothing. RG3 fucking sneezes wrong. They overanalyze all those damn press conferences, the same stupid shit. Rookie of the year, played well, hurt himself, and now they're ready to throw his ass away. But yet and still, Matt Schaub is still a backup. Oswald has a new contract, has done nothing. Jay Culler continues to be mediocre. Brian Hoyer. Brian Hoyer, who was with the Texans last year, I think broke a playoff record for interceptions. Brian Hoyer's still in the league. He's still in the damn league. He's a backup in Chicago after throwing like five interceptions in the playoffs with the Texans. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody remembers. Must be nice. RG3 can't even get fucking divorced without the media talking about that shit. This doesn't make sense to me, man. Why? I mean, I get why they do it, but I don't see why anybody cares, man. 
It doesn't have a damn thing to do with football. They're just doing whatever they can to try to put pressure on them, but they're not saying anything about none of these rookie quarterbacks. They don't want unnecessary pressure.